Okay, good day, ladies and gentlemen. It's, um, I'm back. Here I am. <laughs> and uh, I just have this short little thing here for you because this, this article just kind of tickled my fancy. So, there's really not much to it. Like, it's the whopping. Like, look, look at this. It's like, what is this? Seven sentences? Nothing substantial. But what is worth noting is Trump family friend and Ripple board member. Now, now we can even go down. We'll look at this other one little bit of sentence. Close friend to Donald Trump's son-in-law, Jared Kushner. Now, okay, what, why is this important, Kyle? Like, what, what are you doing? If you don't know, a couple things. First of which is the world's going into digital currencies, digital methods of payment, right? And uh, if you haven't noticed, we've already been doing this for quite some time with debit cards, right? If you really think that when you swipe that debit card and you make a purchase at that store, there's some dude out there running around from a bank and taking the cash from the bank and, and running to the, the shop's bank and depositing it. No, it's all digital. It's digits on a computer moving from one place to another. Either way, it's all digital. It's just computer stuff. It's been like that for quite some time. But now we're moving to a much more secure, more efficient, and in the long run, actually much more beneficial to the people, economic system. And phasing out paper currency altogether. Now I already hear, oh, it's the... It's the what is it? The mark of the beast and the end of the world and all that blah 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 nonsense. Right. So that is a possibility in some routes uh, as a uh, a government having complete control over the finances of the people. That is no bueno. That is not good. But there are alternatives. But uh, this is not the video for the this and that. Look into centralized and decentralized, open source. Know these terms if you're looking to research things because they will help you find the right the right projects. So now Ripple, Ripple is a, well, they get funny when you call it like, Ripple's not the, not the currency. Okay, fine. Ripple, you're whatever you are. You're the name of a company. Yay for you. XRP is the best digital asset for global payments. Or so they claim. Because they're not. But I'm not going to get into that. Um, but again, remembering that the, this, the tie between the board member and Trump, President Trump, I shall say. And they are pretty much like a bridge between offering uh, cross-border payments uh, with cheap fees and super quick. So super handy for the implementation of cryptocurrencies or digital currencies. Because what's the other thing? The uh, central bank, CB, uh, DC? CB, central bank digital currencies. Yeah, CBDCs. Now you can look into uh, Ripple all you want. They are pretty big, you know. If you don't, haven't noticed, they are number four by market cap on the entire list of cryptocurrencies. Here you have Bitcoin, Ethereum, uh, Tether, and then XRP Ripple. This is Ripple. A market cap of $11.5 billion. They are no small fish. Um, small fish is in comparison of like some you know, companies and things, but in the crypto realm, they you know, they're a big deal. And we'll move on over to Bank of America Zip Lifts on Ripple Partnership. So Ripple's been ha, making waves. Wink, wink, nudge, nudge. Did you get it? <laughs> With a lot of banking institutions and uh, Bank of America is one of which, right? They've been partnered for a while and they came out and Bank of America kind of like didn't want it to come out so they kind of like frowned upon it. And now recently they're like, oh yeah, you know, we are actually working with Ripple. I've always referred to the Ripple as a banker coin, but uh, other people argue against me with that, so I'm not gonna say that, but they kind of, I mean, they are working with the banks, as you can see. But being a bridge between cross-border payments, um, they are technically are not a currency in and of itself. Uh, people speculate on it, and it has value, much like a share does, but, uh, and it has utility but anyways so getting to the point of like people wondering like oh is are we really going digital is that is that a digital currency is going to be a thing well of course it is international chamber of commerce get out of here <laughs> how banks are going digital to manage covid19 right so there's this thing going around they claim to be a virus and whatnot whatever but if you haven't noticed, 
there are some shops that do not prefer cash payments. They're trying to mitigate using cash, claiming it to be dirty and a easy means to infect other people with uh, said virus. And there's also a coin shortage. Uh, so they're trying to get the coins in, which is funny, right? They want to accept coins as uh, because there's the coin sh shortage, but they won't accept paper money because it's dirty. Like I imagine coins are just as dirty as the paper money, but I mean, what do I know? I'm no scientist. Anywho, and then we go to the next. Dun, dun, dun. Federal Reserve is looking into developing a digital currency in the U.S. Uh, what this is from uh, 2019, November of last year, almost a year ago, that they admitted to looking into developing a digital currency, which they've been looking into it for a while. But uh, and then, so we'll go on to the next piece, which is countries that are already implementing digital currencies or are looking into digital currencies. Now, uh, mind you, this article was written in 2017 and it was updated in 2018. Okay, so we'll just go through quick. Ecuador, they're already using it to pay for taxis and whatnot. Right? Isn't that what he said here? Services like taking taxis and public services. Tunisia. Uh, again, so this is these both Ecuador and Tunisia were 2015. It's five years ago. Countries were already implementing digital currencies. Five years ago, uh, Senegal, Sweden, Estonia, China, Russia, Japan, Venezuela, and Israel. In 2017. So remember, this is an old article. And all these countries are have we've been looking into it, but funny enough, uh, back in these time periods, actually, Russia talked about banning cryptocurrencies. And I think that was 2017, and China straight up did ban cryptocurrencies for a time. Now I think it has something to do with them like stopping other people from accumulating it and having the CCP uh, accumulating what they could. Uh, by banning everyone else and just allowing themselves to buy it, but uh, yeah, it's enough on that. But yeah, so it is a thing. Whether you like it or not, it is a thing that will be implemented. And so don't be like the person that didn't invest into Apple or Amazon or Google uh, because you didn't understand it. Right? Just because you doesn't understand something doesn't mean that thing isn't like revolutionary. You don't have to understand it for to understand that it can be revolutionary. No, you can do your own research. There are tons of videos on YouTube explaining how the technology technology actually works and what it's actually doing to disrupt the, our current system from our banking system and dismantling the banking system, allowing the people themselves to be sovereign and in control of their own funds and wealth and finances and investments. Because it's all interwoven within blockchain technology itself, of which cryptocurrencies are only one facet of this technology. Remember that. Restructuring the governance system, uh, and the, the voting system, taxation. What else here? Uh, AI and computing. That's a whole other thing of blockchain technology we could do. So there's a whole slew of things besides just being used as a currency. So, anyways. I said this was going to be a short video. I don't know how long this is, but it's a lot longer than I intended. So, I'm out of here.